Okay, I thought I started this video out by in the camper showing you the chicks. I don't really know how old they are anymore, but you can see they're getting quite big. Probably only have a couple more weeks and they'll be going outside if it ever stops raining. We got to do a little bit of work in the chicken run area to keep the old chickens, the older chickens, separated from these guys. The older chickens would beat these guys up to, well, they'd kill them. So we want to get that cleaned up, but it's so wet and muddy and everything that we want to make sure that it's dry so we don't slip and break our ankle. They're a little bit more skittish than any chickens we've had before. We've always raised our chickens inside the tiny house before, but now that we've got the camper, this was more convenient, worked out better. More room for them, but they don't get as much human interaction either. So now it's getting warm enough that we can leave the lid open. We have this netting. We got this that we, we cover up the hole with. Gives them some ventilation. And on, at nighttime, I close it up. That way they can huddle up and keep warm. And I don't even have to run the heater anymore. It's staying warm enough for them. And when I come up at 6 o'clock, I mean, it's, it's still kind of dark. And they're up wanting their food. So we'll put this back up. Let's see if I can. So now it's completely enclosed. I tell you, this camper sure has come in handy. It's, I know it's, uh, it's criticized a lot in in the comment section that we need to fix it up, and, or we should have gotten a better one. But we don't even use it for camping. It was for Carolyn's son, so he would have a place to stay for last summer. And now, you know, we might get a visitor. We may get a visitor. And then he, that person can stay here. we got the air conditioner in the window. They'll have the air conditioner. And if he wants air conditioning at night, we could run the generator at night. No big deal. The, the big one. We'd run the bigger one because it's quieter. And he'd have most ever all the electric. I can imagine he would want to have with that generator. He'd have air conditioning. I mean, we don't have a TV or anything, but it, he could even run the fridge, I would think, on that. So, it this has worked out really well. I don't understand why people don't like it. It's uh, It was a nice addition to our little place. But I guess that's kind of the point of this video is... I've tried to explain in this channel many times that we are minimalist. And I guess you could call us frugal. I don't even know if that's the right word. Carolyn and I don't like spending money. She has taught me so much since I met her about money. I always wanted to be rich. And I worked pretty hard to get there. I was always progressing in my life and always trying to achieve the next best thing. Until I met her... And there's times YouTube, that's where I make my money now, it just does horrible. It it's just doesn't make any money. I end up paying what feels like more taxes than what I make. And she says, what do we need money for? I mean, I like to have savings for my retirement. And I always want to make sure that we got enough money to replace the truck if necessary or replace the house if necessary. Or an emergency comes up. And we do. We, we never spend more than what we make. Never. I paid a pretty huge tax bill two months ago. And it still wasn't more than what we brought in. It, it's just a, an interesting way of looking at things. I mean, your, your whole life you're taught that you gotta, you gotta be making money, you gotta be making lots of money, you're always progressing, you're always doing better, always improving. And, and Carolyn taught me that no, you can be just as happy if not happier making less money. You know, this truck, uh, I was thinking about it, we bought this new, paid it off. I only paid payments on it for maybe a year, and by then I had it paid off. Long story, I mean, we were debt free, and we were trying to get debt free, but I had to give my daughter a car as part of the child support settlement. So we gave her, I gave her the car, but I had to have something, so I bought this, and it's just a four cylinder. But it's 10 years old already. It's only got 84,000 miles on it. See, there again, minimalist, minimalist thinking. Where do we need to go? We're quite happy here. The thing is, the truck has done everything we needed it to do. 
we traveled the country in it, put a pop-up camper on the back of it, and then we en ended up putting a truck camper on it. Then, you know, we built lightweight truck camper. It's hauled all our firewood, or she get her. It just, it does everything. It's been real handy. Uh, I've had to replace the thermostat on it a couple times. I'm, the thermostat must be faulty in these things or something because I've never had to replace the thermostat more than once on a car. And I've already replaced this one twice. But even at that, this last one, I only spent, I did it myself, so it was a lot cheaper. I think the first time it was $150 or so. And this time I probably only spent $80 or $90. It, you had to buy the antifreeze and that's what was so costly the thermostat wasn't that bad as a matter of fact i bought two of them because i thought i bought the wrong one the first time so i bought a, another one and it's sitting in the back of the truck and that's including the 80 or 90 dollars but everything we do is is minimalization and the thing is is it keeps me from having to go work for an employer youtube is hard enough you're always always chasing your tail with youtube and the people are so hateful in the comment section. I mean, it's a tough job. I'm not complaining. It's a better job than having to work for an employer. You know, at least in the comment section, you can block the, the, the guy who's giving you harassment today. But your boss, he can harass you every day and you can never block him. Another example is this well. I, and I know I talk about the well a lot. And there's a, there's a huge point I want to make to this video. So the property was $4,200. In order to drill a well, it would have been a $5,000. So that would have put the property up at $9,200 plus a $5,000 house. So now we're up to, you know, $15,000, $16,000. But the, the place had a well on it. It's old. It's an old well, and it's got its problems. And I, I just got an email, I guess yesterday, talking about how I need to do something different with the well because this well is just causing you too much stress. No. This well isn't causing me stress. I mean, I'm disappointed in it sometimes and wish I could figure it out. And, but it is an old well. It does give us water and it gives us unlimited water. We never ran out of water. That Never. We always have water. It might be uh, discolored. And I'm really learning that that's all it is. It's not dirt, it's discolored. And I think I figured it out finally. So I can live with it. But, you know, I've spent $500 on this. New concrete, the well packer, well pump. Obviously, you got to have a well pump. Actually, bought two well pumps. And then everything else I've done has been free. I dug this ditch, you know, a piece of pipe that I needed. I found out laying in the woods. You know, it was here when we got here, and I just threw it out in the woods. So everything's been pretty free beyond the $500. And it's a good well. Do I really need to spend 5000 so it's easier? And that's the key. To make life easier, I should dig a, a better well, a new well. Well, I'm not looking to make things easier. I mean, think about it. My life is crazy easy, considering the last job I had. The last job I had was killing me. I, I know I would not be alive today if I had still been working there. I remember trying to unwind after I quit. We started traveling. And I was just, just wound up tight. I don't even, I mean, the best example would be like a rubber band. You, you twist it up and it gets real tight and then you let go and it kind of unwinds. But it wasn't just that quick unwinding. It, it was, it was tough to unwind. And it took me a couple of years to finally get to a point where I was just, relaxed and stress-free it was a terrible job but I'm supposed to make my life easier here well it's not going to be easy if I have to buy things it's not easy at all if I need to go buy a new camp or a new truck or put in a new well I got to go get a job YouTube isn't going to cut it for me so now I'm working for a boss again that's hard it was hard the first time, the last time I did it. It will be hard the next time I do it. It's hard. It's not easy. This is easy. Dealing with an old clunky well 
is easy. The only person I gotta make happy is me and Carolyn, and Carolyn couldn't care less about the well. She really doesn't care. I mean, I show her some nasty water, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> no, it's not. I uh, just, it's, she's just never dissatisfied. So, I don't have to worry about her. So the only person I have to please with the well is me. It's easy. I don't need to go buy things to make it easier because it wouldn't be easier because I'm, once again, having to work for an employer. And I try to stress this all the time, and I, I, it's obvious I don't get my point across. Just got a comment the other day. And I don't even think they realized what they were saying. Your diet would be too boring. I just couldn't do it. I don't know why you'd do it. My diet is a carnivorous diet. I eat eggs, meat, and cheese. Okay, you're right. It's boring. So I should immediately quit to have a better meal so I can gain four or 500 pounds, have all kinds of health issues, go going to the doctor all the time, paying co-pays on your insurance, and always unhealthy, always sick, can't do anything. So that's an option. So what I got? Overweight unhealthy of course I'm blind in my right eye because doctors so I am getting better with it being on a meat diet but that no we need to get rid of that and so I can be blind so yeah you're right I should immediately start enjoying my meals so I can go through the torture of everybody else's life no this is better I'm happier here the other day I was explaining to you and I'm not picking on this guy Although it probably sounds like I am. I don't mean to be picking on this guy. And I hope this guy doesn't take offense to this. So the other day, I was telling you that my well recovery rate is about five gallons a minute. If I were to run my well pump full blast, that's 13 gallons a minute, I would run out of water in the well in just a matter of minutes. It doesn't take long at all. So I throttle this down and... I kind of guess I don't fill the bucket up and tie myself anymore. I used to do that. You know, if it took a minute to fill a bucket of water, I figured, okay, there's five gallons a minute. But I just kind of guess. I kind of know where the knob's supposed to sit now. But not enough to say for sure. So what I do is I come out here, I fill the IBC tank for 10 minutes, and then I shut the well off, let it fill back up for about 20 minutes, come back out here, do it again. Well... This guy comments and says, you know you can buy a flow rate gauge, which I did know. I mean, I've seen them before. I've seen them on YouTube videos, them digging a well. And he says, uh, I'm sure it's not necessary, just a thought. And so I said, you do realize that we don't spend money unless necessary. I literally made a video about being a minimalist yesterday. So... And I felt like, well, then after I reread it, I realized, man, that sounded a little cranky, but that's beside the point. I mean, I don't mean to be cranky. I'm just a cranky person, I guess. I sound cranky. So he replies back, and I'm glad he did because it really helped me understand what's going on with my audience. He says, true, true. I view it as more of a, if needed. It's why I said it wasn't necessary. I was thinking it could help in the future with other projects, but honestly thinking about it, I'm not sure what for. I like to dream of making everything easier for off-grid, but work is work, I suppose, LOL. If you want it easy, stay on grid, is the takeaway, I guess. Well, first of all, don't guess, that's exactly what the takeaway is. The, the thing is, he said something there that still makes me wonder if he understands the full scope of what I'm saying. Stay on grid would be easier for being in your home turning on the water faucet, going to the bathroom, all these things would probably be easier. You know, I gotta carry a bucket of water in so we can flush the toilet. That's not easy, it's, it's more work. But being on the grid, when, you know, life in the house would be easy. But life itself is not easier. It's a thousand times harder when you're living on grid. Because in order to pay for that grid, you have to have a job with an employer who loves to yell at you every day that you cannot block in the comment section. You have to go to work ready to be yelled at. And by the time you're, you're quitting, you're so wound up, you know, you can feel that you are near death. That's not easy. That's a nightmare. This is easier. 
worrying about my flow rate is not a big deal. I set the timer, I shut off the water in 10 minutes. It's just, it's just not complicated. And it gives me a video, which gives me money. So click this up next box that'd take you to a video where I was showing you this drain was, was finally working. That's a French drain. So hope I can inspire you to make life easy. That does not include being on grid. So you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.